everybody. How's it going? Hope you're going to have an amazing morning. Anyway, we got something super special today. Got something brand new from my friends over at AMS Neve, the legendary British company that pretty much recorded almost every single significant rock and metal album in history. Yeah, there's it's no secret that I love Neve stuff. I mean, like I've got 1073 OPX back here. It's an absolute beast. It's an eight channel mic preamp that's just like winds up on everything that I do. I love, love the Neve stuff so much. I've even had to do two different clones of their stuff. I had a pair of 1272s by Vintech. I used that for years and years and I've still got my Great River MP to NV, which is a clone of their 1073 preamp. This is Neve's first two-channel recording interface. And this is possibly the most expensive two-channel recording interface ever created. It's even more expensive than the Universal Audio Apollo. What's it do? What's it look like? Let's check it out. All right, so first and foremost, I'm just gonna try and open this box without, you know, like cutting myself as I've done on the show a few times before. So hopefully it goes somewhat safely. Always cut away, kids, always. Learn that the hard way. But yeah, they've done a nice job with the, with the packaging. Certainly not coming off easily, that's for sure. Oh, come on, jeez. Well, I gotta hand it to the Neve guys. They really take their packaging seriously. Damn. Oh. Finally, finally, finally. Ooh, it says Neve. Oh, God. You know, it's always cool getting something in the mail from Neve. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the brand, as are most recording engineers on planet Earth. I mean, their stuff just sounds great. I'm more than happy to use the preamp. One of these days, I'm hoping I'll actually be able to afford one of their nice automated mixers. I got to check one out at NAMM, and oh, it was so cool. Maybe one day. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, let's see what the two-channel has to offer, which is great, you know, because I'm looking for a new two-channel unit to bring with me to Europe just to see how it how it goes but uh, this one's a little heavy this is uh, this is the 88R <laughs> This is the 88M. Learn how to read, Glenn. The 88R defines the world's top studios, your choice of Air, Abbey Road, and Capital Studios. Now you have access to a world-class sound. Yeah, this is the thing. This is a portable dual mic preamp and USB audio interface powered by the 88R console technology. Record and monitor on the go, plug and play, connectivity, professional grade conversion. And I wouldn't doubt it. Neve stuff is absolutely top of the heap. Granted, converters are all pretty freaking good these days, but these are transformer coupled mic preamps in here. And that's just something you don't normally see in a portable two-channel unit. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to bring this to Europe or not. It might be a little bit heavy, but if I've got, say, some serious local recording gigs or something like that and I only need a couple of channels, this is probably going to be the thing I reach for. Now, this comes with a very serious USB connection. I mean, like, the connector is just massive on this, like you'd get for a printer or something like that. So, obviously, this thing is going to draw some power. And, oh, we get two USB connections, uh, including USB-C. Okay, nice touch there, Neve. Thank you very much. And uh, the moment of truth. Ooh, silica gel. Bass players, don't eat them, please. And, yeah, this has definitely got some weight. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to be too heavy to bring in a roller bag to Europe for, like, a month. That's just, like, no, that's not happening. Actually, I did get to see this thing at NAMM. They were showing it off at the booth, which was great. But, uh, wow, look at that. Okay, pretty simple. Says Neve down the side. That'll definitely wow the clients. You know, it's got the big red N on it. That's what, that's what we're here for. This is a pretty basic setup. We've got two gain controls. Fan of power. Uh, on both individually selectable, that's a nice touch. A lot of interfaces, it's kind of like one or the other. You get it across all the channels or, or not. Uh, we got a master volume level, headphones, and a nice center detent on the headphone monitoring as well. That's cool. So yeah, pretty simple. And on the back, we've got our TRS outs, stereo outs to go to your monitors or whatnot. We've got a locker thing, USB, ADAT in and out. That's a big one right there. So if you want to add an extra eight channels, you can. So you can turn this into a 10 channel unit. And what would you add for an extra eight channels? Well, the 1073 OPX, they're going to have an ADAT connector for it. So we'll be able to run like that. Uh, I already talked to the Neve guys. They are going to send me an ADAT board for this. So I'll be able to swap out the Dante and put that in and try it out at some point as well. That'll be cool. That'll be another episode in the near future. Loving the Dante stuff, by the way. But yeah, ADAT's really cool. And what's really important here, and I think this is just was a really nice touch, is they put channel inserts on here. And that's something I've never seen on another interface. A lot of guys are like, hey, I want to get an outboard compressor i'm like well if you do that you know with the interface you have you're gonna have to buy an outboard preamp as well because you need you need the compressor to go in between your, your your converters and your preamp this 
the channel insert, that allows you to do that. So I could literally use the mic preamp on here uh, that it's from the 88R console technology and hook it up to say a distressor or any of the number of compressors I have back here and then loop it back in. And that's going to be absolutely fine. That's gonna give me exactly what I'm looking for with no screwing around. So all you guys who wanna get like an outboard compressor or whatnot, I was scratching out, what should I get, what should I get? Um, maybe check out the 88M because this has the rarest of all things and that's channel inserts. I think that's really cool. Anyway, enough yakking, let's hook it up. Let's see what this baby can do. So I've got the 88M at the desk here and yeah, it's fairly heavy, but then again, it's packing a couple of those Neve transformers and they're really cool. I'm gonna show you what that's about in just one sec. But I've got, couple of these crazy adapters plugged in here and that's because this thing has something no other portable unit has and that's channel inserts so i've got that routed out to my tt patch bay and unfortunately all i've got are tt to xlr so i got to use these crazy freaking adapters to plug into the stereo quarter inch here so just a little reminder i need to wire up some tt to stereo quarter inch at some point just so i don't have all this crap hanging out of the back of my interface this is the real strength of this thing and i've never seen this on any other two channel interface is the channel inserts because i've got all this wonderful outboard here and now i can finally use it i mean like that's a big thing i talk to a lot of guys who are recording at their desktops at home and it's always the same thing it's like yeah i've got a great interface but now i've got to go buy an external preamp because because I want to get into outboard compression so I can compress my vocal on the way in. Now with this, you don't have to uh, because you've got the channel inserts. Now I've got like the ultimate bargain basement compressor here. I've got a Drummer DL241, which is a two channel VCA compressor. I think I picked it up on the used market for like 350 Canadian. Like these are dirt cheap and these are awesome. I use these so much. I actually sold a pair of my DBX160 XTs because I just wasn't using them. We throw on compression here and here we go. It's the instant radio voice. And yeah, once again, I'm using the internal preamps and that's it. I don't need to go buy an external preamp for this. So that is a big win for the Neve right here. Now, the really cool thing is, remember I was talking about those transformers. Check this out. Just going to turn this up. Can I kind of increase the gain here? Get a little bit more going. Now, Granny, you really can't do this unless you've got an outboard compressor because you need something in there to absorb all that extra energy or you're just going to clip your converters. But we can crank this up and crank it up and crank it up and get start to get that saturation sound going on. You can hear a bit of the sibilance there as well, but we're getting that saturation, especially when we start leading into the vocal just a little bit more. We start pushing that input transformer just a little bit harder. And we get really cool distorted vocals like this. Hey! Oh, that is just wonderful. Wicked cool. And again, the compressor's just stepping down on I don't think it, you can see a little bit here on this camera here. You can see, can you see that there? Hey! You can see a little bit of the compression going on. Maybe I got a little too much uh, stuff in the way here. Let's see here. Hey, hey, hey. Can we see that? A little bit. Yeah, we can see the output at least. But yeah, the compressor's definitely doing its job and stepping down on things and keeping things from clipping. If we punch that out, you know, I, I turn this up and it just distorts and it just sounds like shit. You know what I mean? So you got to have some kind of an outboard compressor for this thing if you really want to take advantage of those input transformers because that is just super cool. And it's just so nice and so just saturated. It's got some really cool functionality to it. And if you're looking to get into outboard gear, this might be a real viable alternative to what else is out there because it's not stupidly expensive and it gives you channel inserts. And that's really cool. Like I said, I love the sound of these preamps, especially when you start driving them. They've definitely got tons and tons and tons of character. I'm really impressed with that. Again, I'll just back off the uh, back off the gain a little bit, but I'm still getting that nice kind of FM radio voiceover compression thing going on. And I can just pull my threshold down a little bit here. And there we go. We've got it right there. Good morning. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It just works and it works real well. If you're into like doing voiceover work or you want to do some singing or anything like that, yeah, this might be just the ticket you're looking for. Unfortunately, it's not all good. That's, that's the problem. I was fucking around with this last night and uh, I came across something like, you gotta be shitting me. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. And this is why I'm kind of doing a screen cap here so you guys can see exactly what's going on because I think this is really important because I started fucking around with the DI. Oh yeah, we're here at the, at the front here. Yeah, by the way, we got like selectable push buttons and whatnot. We got mic, line, and DI. So that's great. It's pretty versatile. And then we've got all kinds of monitoring options. I'm not monitoring through the software at the moment. I'm just monitoring right through the converters because I want to hear exactly to what's going on. Um, I'm going to pull up Reaper's live monitoring for a second here for the guitar stuff because I do want to show this. I'm not running into any latency issues and 
bear in mind, I am running a MacBook Air right now with this. And this is going to be my portable rig for the upcoming studio scene conference in Mannheim. I'm doing a master class there on drum miking. So if you're thinking about going to studio scene, I'm going to be there. Neve's going to be one of uh, the sponsors. I'm also working with Lewitt. And we're going to do a course on drum miking. It's going to be a total blast. But this is what I'm running. I'm literally running an M1 MacBook Air and a Neve 88M and then a 1073 OPX. We're going to be bringing all the drum mics in via light pipe. And that's going to work absolutely great. I'm, I'm expecting it to be absolutely flawless. Like, I am pushing things really hard right now. I've got a live amp sim going. I've got this going. I've got loopback going. I've got OBS going. And this system is just running absolutely flawlessly. What am I running for latency at the moment? Let's just take a peek here. And we've got... Stop playback. To, yeah, I think it's, it's either 48 or 64 samples, Like, and this is no hiccups, no nothing. It's just fabulous. So there, there is that. That's really cool. Anyway, now the problem I've got with the DI here isn't the sound. The sound is great. You can actually get some really cool effects going on as well if you're using a little bit of outboard compression. I'm going to show you what that's all about in a minute. However, this is, this is what kind of bites. It's got the same problem that the first generation Focusrite Scarlett had, and that is not enough headroom for working with high output guitars. If you don't have anything in the channel insert at all, you're going to run into overs. You're going to get into the reds. You're going to you're going to spike your signal, and that really bites. To be honest with you, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Neve stuff. I love the sound. I mean, like, it's the history of rock and roll. But fuck sakes, guys, what the hell did anybody bother to unplug the channel inserts when they were testing the DI? Because I don't have anything that doesn't spike. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to switch over here in just a sec. Okay, yeah, just switching uh, to the DAW mix right now so I can play this. But keep an eye on this fader down here. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> And this is with the DI down all the way. Watch the meter here and watch the channel. You'll see what I mean about the signal getting clipped. And this is just normal playing. These are Seymour Duncans. This isn't, these aren't even super high output, but it's just enough to be annoying. <laughs> It's like, oh, come on, you have got to be shitting me. This is freaking Neve. I, I, I expect better, guys. Like, what the hell? What You think this is bad? Check out my LTD. Okay, so we've reset the meter. I've got the LTD purple nurple, and this has got EMGs in it. This is even worse. <laughs> check the meter there it's it's all spiking out and that's that's just a serious piss off now not all is lost we've got really two options here uh one you can use a di box like i always say you know use the countryman di because that'll give you some headroom and it's just barely enough and again this is what just with the with the di turned down okay well, let me try that one more time now if i turn the amp sim off here let me let me just uh, we're just going to monitor this live just the just the sound of the pickup <laughs> Remember what I was saying about selectable inputs. We can actually set this to a mic level. We turn this up, but we get a much more darker sound. Lots of headroom, mind you. Tons and tons and tons of headroom. But yeah, there's just no top end anymore. So that's really a no-go. We take this back to DI, you can hear the difference here.
But yeah, it's just spiking all over the place. So it's like, oh, that's really not that great. So one viable alternative is to use a DI box like I've always, always, always recommended. But I mean, like if you're shelling out money for a Neve product, I kind of expect better this, than this, to be honest with you. But let's give it a shot here. And we just switch that over, kick on Phantom, and we should be in business here. See if that's going to spike or not. See if that's going to give us the headroom we need. Again, this is just down all the way. <laughs> Wow, that's kind of disappointing. It did give us a little bit more headroom, but not quite enough. We need an we need an input pad here. That's that's a must. If there's if they do a version two of this thing, they have to have an input pad. There's just no excuse for that whatsoever. Not even the country man's gonna fix this one. So what are we to do? The only thing I can think of is you know, put some kind of a manual volume control in the channel insert. In this case, I'm gonna use channel two of my drummer DL241. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we're tuned up. Let's take a look here. That works, that definitely works, but... And we are still just spiking out ever so slightly. So we're, let's throw on the DL241, see what we get. Hopefully I've got this the right way. Which I don't. Now I gotta swap these around. All right, so I've now got the DL241 properly routed here, and I've got it set to be as clean as possible. All I'm doing is taking the output level down ever so slightly. I've got no actual compression going on whatsoever. I'm basically using it as an expensive volume knob, but it's doing the trick and it's just bringing the signal down just enough so it's not gonna peak out and not affect any of the tone, and it does work. <laughs> No problems at all there, I'm not spiking or anything like that. I'm getting a nice clean signal without affecting the tone. That's great. I'm using the Bogren amp knob, by the way. That's just one knob, turn it up, it sounds good. Does the trick, fantastic stuff. So I gotta say that is a little disappointing though. I can't even get the signal quiet enough if I'm using a direct box, which is usually the first thing I'll recommend to people if they're running into an issue with the DI being just a little too loud. Quite frankly, I expect a, just a bit better from Neve considering their pedigree. Uh, again, I'm not sure exactly what the deal was was going on i talked to the guys at the company and they're like wow that's pretty interesting can you give us some more information and i'm like here here's the video you know apparently in beta testing they didn't run into any issues but i think this thing needs an input pad of some sort for the di a little switch where you can take the signal down by 10 dbs is going to save a lot of people a whole lot of of grief. Hopefully, you know, tooling that wouldn't be too difficult, but hey, who's to say what's going on there? But that is a, a big caveat for me. So if you're in the market for a desktop uh, recording solution and you're doing a lot of DI stuff into amp sims or whatnot, you might want to get some kind of a compressor you can put into the channel insert uh, just to keep that DI under control because it is a little hot. Now, not all is lost though. If I throw this onto some compression, we can have a little bit of fun here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There, there is a flip side of this. That that's a really neat effect. And throw a bit of compression on the DI here. Now watch what happens when we start increasing the gain. And you know, again, we're compressing the DI a lot harder now just to keep things from spiking out, but it's gonna drive that input transformer. Check this out. <laughs>
gets a little insane with the noise levels, that's for sure. Just make sure you're heavily gaining stuff. Let me just pull that compressor back a little bit and see what we get again. Try that one more time. That might be a little much. Okay, yeah, so just learn a little something there is if you're going to use an outboard compressor, make sure you're hitting it pretty hard to keep those spikes from getting out of control. But that is a damn cool fuzz effect, I got to say. Wow, that is really neat, and I would love to try that on a client's record at some point. I think that would be an awful lot of fun to track that. I might want to split that signal up and get something a little bit cleaner too because that's one of those things like once you print it, you're stuck with it kind of thing. All right, so that is the Neve 88M. Uh, for two-channel interface, yeah, it does the thing. It sounds really great, but with the one caveat, you're going to need something to get your DI under control if you're doing a lot of stuff with high-gain guitars and whatnot. Does it sound good? Oh, yeah, it really does. And is it solid? Yep, no problems, no glitches, no nothing. I'm very, very happy with this box besides the one thing with the DI. Uh, like I said, if they add a pad to this thing, it's probably going to be absolutely perfect. But if you're wanting to get a two-channel unit, that's got loads of character and not just a simulated character but actual character um yeah this is the thing i think this has got a really great advantage over other things that are you know priced similarly but have you know these big software packages and whatnot this allows you to plug into the actual stuff not the simulations that is really freaking cool there and yeah with a little bit of ingenuity you can get that di under control but i really wish we didn't have to work around with it i wish we had the actual thing working correctly so neve you know i'll give you guys maybe i don't know like a seven or seven and a half out of ten Sounds great. Come on, get the DI fixed, and you've got a complete and total winner. Okay, once again, I'm going to be in Mannheim, Germany on August 30th and 31st for Studio Scene. I'll be doing a drums masterclass, and I'll be working with Lewitt Microphones, and we'll be working on gear provided by Neve. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. If you want to come by, by say hi, all that kind of cool stuff, please do. That's what I'm going to be there for. Hope to see you there, and until then, keep making the best records you possibly can, and I'm going to try to keep helping you guys the best I can. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.